Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make healthy living available. I'm your host, Fred Zucker, coming to you from the Park University campus in Dallas, Texas. Today, our special guest is Dr. Mark Charette. Welcome, Dr. Charette. Glad you. you could be with us. Dr. Charette is well known in chiropractic circles around the nation, indeed, around the world. Dr. Charette has recently become a Dallas resident. We're glad that you're now here in Dallas with us, Dr. Charette. At our recently completed Parker seminar held on the campus just last week, Dr. Charette received a very singular award, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Park University Alumni Association Board of Directors. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It was quite an honor. It, it was a great honor and certainly a well-deserved honor for you. you. And uh, that's one reason we've asked you to come and be with us, just to, mm -hmm. to say congratulations in this setting and also to uh, get to know you a little bit better. Super. With that in mind, just give us a little bit of background on, on Dr. Mark Charette and how you came to be with us here at Parker University. Well, uh, basically born and raised in uh, the Detroit area. Uh, went to high school and junior college there. Uh, went to Illinois uh, to get a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And then promptly uh, enrolled at Palmer College in Davenport, Iowa. Upon graduation, I went right to the San Francisco Bay Area, where I practiced pretty much through the 1980s. Ended up in Las Vegas after that, practicing. Oh. Yeah. Uh, then decided to travel the world for various reasons and got the uh, teaching bug um, yeah. developed some protocols while i was in europe on extremity adjusting and here i am 36 years later uh, dr shred i know you professionally because you have worked with me and my wife melody and uh, certainly can uh, attribute uh, great professionalism to your practice as a chiropractor would you say that you have a specialty something that you really enjoy doing that uh, is in the chiropractic realm um, well, I'm basically known in the postgraduate field for extremity adjusting. Um, uh, that developed very slowly while I began in college. Um, we, we learned extremity adjusting back in my era, the late 70s. It's pretty much a specialty or what I call an add-on, where if a person's foot hurt, we would adjust their foot, we, their wrist hurt. And I've come up with a, a neurological explanation of, of why I think it's good to adjust, or at least um, examine and appropriately adjust the extremities based on indicators as opposed to symptomatology. Mm -hmm. And I've gone so far as to go into all of DD's green books and show that DD Palmer right. not only was the first chiropractor, but he was the first chiropractor to adjust feet, knees, hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders on virtually all of his patients. Not many people know that. Um, the Palmers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, DD and BJ, learned most of their extremity technique from a Welsh bone setter who uh, lived outside of Boston, last really? name Sweet. Hmm. And uh, it's kind of interesting. So uh, there's a, a sentence in one of the green books that says chiropractors adjust any and all of the 300 joints of the body. So I look at extremity adjusting um, as part of the chiropractic protocol. Mm -hmm. so, so when I began, I took various courses as a student, then uh, in post-grad. And then in the 90s, the early 90s through the mid-90s, I spent a lot of time in Germany working with some biomechanics and mm. neurology folks. And um, the people that have been to my seminars have seen the, the fruits of that labor where right. we took hundreds of patients and using a European version of bone and skin markers walked people on treadmills and various things uh, and actually tracked certain patterns. Mm. So... What I've dedicated my teaching career toward is not necessarily a certain technique on extremities, but certain patterns that are common. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of feel like I get the biggest bang for the buck, especially in a postgraduate setting when I'm teaching people what they see most of the time. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I've seen your, your teaching situations where you have large numbers of Parker students in a situation with a seminar, and it's been very good to watch that. Do you find that there are certain kinds of conditions that, that present more often than others? I know from my own experience, having gone through a misspent youth of uh, athletics and running and martial arts and so on, there are certain things that you've had to deal with me. Is there anything that you would sort of characterize uh, as uh, the most often presented symptoms? Absolutely. Every chiropractic student will tell you that they've answered a question, what is the most common 
injury in the lower mm-hmm. extremity. It's an inversion sprain, and quite honestly, it's the most common injury in the human frame. Mm. So a lot of people have a lot of foot things that go on that don't seemingly hurt or don't hurt that much or hurt later on in life. And right. so that's how I've always kind of looked at it from the ground up. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, very, uh, what I have always tried to look at is mechanism of injury. For example, in the wrist, most mechanism, most wrists are injured in extension. Mm. So when we did our motion x-ray study, we took hundreds of people right, left side and put bone markers and found which direction do things go. And mm. then basically I educated people on an adjustment to go the other way. Uh, so, Makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And so I use, a, I use a real simple approach called ASR. A is adjust, uh, basically in the opposite pattern, ap- opposite direction of subluxation. Mm-hmm. And then S is stabilize or support, which would usually be braces or taping. Mm-hmm. And then R is rehab. So um, kind of my seminar used to be called How I ASR Feet, Knees, Hips, Wrist, Elbows, and Shoulders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know the students enjoy it very much, and they're excited about it. They've seen that uh, in practice with you delivering the information. Well, I have the the honor of having my protocols in the curriculum included into it. So doctors uh, Tom Redenbaugh and Bob Wilburn actually teach what I teach on the road here here on campus. Two of our faculty here at Carson University. Yes. Well, that, I would say, is adding a lot to the, uh, the, the issues that our students can deal with right here at Parker, which is great. Would you say there's something you enjoy most about your career in chiropractic? Is something that keeps you getting up and going, going in and doing that work every day? Yeah, uh, people have come to my seminars know that um, I have a label called a cancer survivor. I personally don't like the label, but um, I had a, a form of prostate cancer that was unusual for someone in their 30s, and it took me about seven years to resolve it. And so I went from this very busy practitioner to um, traveling the world trying to get well. Mm-hmm. And once I was well, I decided to do what I call floats my boat. And right. what I love to do is to teach. Yes. And um, so that's really kind of what made me realize that I like things and money and uh, affluence like everybody, mm-hmm. but I really get my best um, satisfaction from just watching people progress and helping them get better, yeah. especially students. And uh, so that's my passion in life. Well, that's great and it's obvious watching you interact with students, watching you up on the stage when you're teaching and seeing the videos and just watching the students going through the, mm-hmm. the, the drill with you, you know, they're certainly getting a lot out of it, which makes me excited for them and for you to be here well, thank with you. us at Parker. Appreciate that. You mentioned earlier that you are a, a well-traveled person. You've traveled <clears> the world uh, both working and in other capacities as well. You've lived in a number of areas in the United States. Yes. Is there any place that you would say that is your favorite, and why would that be? Uh, well, here in Dallas, I like it because of all of the opportunities, and I'm close to the college. There's a certain energy that I love about that. But uh, when I first graduated, I went to the Northern California. Mm-hmm. So that I think that will always be near and dear to my heart. A yeah, beautiful part of the world. And... Um, I've been to 20 countries now. I actually taught in Europe three times this year along with Chile. And um, it, it's a lot of fun going to um, other places. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but my favorite place outside of the United States would probably be a tie between Western Canada and most of Australia. Hmm. Um, I love the people, the lifestyle. Um, chiropractic is very popular um, and well accepted. Um, it seems like people just are into life and living and having fun. And so, um, but, but basically Dallas is my home now. Right. And, uh, yeah. Well, there's a lot about Dallas to love. Yes. Of course, Texas is, as many people say, not just a state, but a state of mind. Yes. Yes. And I think that certainly applies to, to Dallas, Texas. Well, you've been in, in the business for quite a while as mm-hmm. a chiropractor in the profession. What do you see in the future for chiropractic? I'm very optimistic about the profession. I think that we now have some incredibly strong science and research behind us Mm -hmm. that we didn't when I graduated. Um, I went to school in 1978, 79, and 80, and we were still known as an unscientific cult. And in the early 90s, we started getting some rock-solid research that showed what we does works. 
There's been multiple, multiple studies and papers on the uh, quality and satisfaction patients get from the chiropractic adjustment. With the unbelievable uh, media coverage of opioid addiction, um, heroin addiction, um, abuse of all types of medications, um, I think people are going to look for other things. And I right. think chiropractic is, is positioned very well. Um, I've always said that I would never want to go back to my first day of chiropractic college, but I would go back to my first day in practice. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the future is so bright. I think that chiropractors have many choices now that they didn't uh, in the past. Right. And I think that the um, scientific and academic preparation of the students is, is of a much higher quality and that we can actually carry on intelligent conversations with medical doctors and other healthcare practitioners that, yes. and not putting down my era at all, but we just, it just wasn't in the, in the curriculum at that point. So we've right. we definitely raised the bar, which I think academically was necessary, and I think possibly even a little higher now. And uh, I think the quality of instruction is a lot better than it was. And so I, I feel good about the whole big picture I think that the way that health care is going in this country, high deductibles, high premiums, that people want to get their money's worth. And I think that right. in a chiropractor's office, they find that. So I'm very enthusiastic uh, when I see the numbers in chiropractic colleges c- continuing to increase in, in the schools. Right. Um, and uh, just the satisfaction that I see a lot of chiropractors having in practice and graduating and, and, and winning right away, so to speak. Right. Well, I think the whole uh, health care environment has changed dramatically just in the relatively short time I've been involved in chiropractic. Emphasis from sickness, illness to wellness. Yes. Which is very much in the, the wheelhouse of chiropractic. Absolutely. So that's the future of chiropractic. What about the mm-hmm. future of Dr. Mark Charette? What do you see in the, the offing for you, Dr. Mark? Well, the reason reasons that I came to Dallas uh, in January of this year was uh, one year ago, I was engaged, and um, my fiance lived in Dallas and worked at a place called Parker University. Ah, uh, yes. Now the, th- the plot thickens a yes, little bit here. Yes, And so uh, that along with um, uh, an opportunity to invest in a clinic here in the Dallas area brought me here. And so um, I'm setting some roots here in Dallas. Um, it would be interesting to see how things pan out that way Um, and um, I'm actually looking at traveling much much less uh, spending more time uh, around the university and even considering teaching in a university someday so um, uh, but the other thing that I'll be doing early next year is completely redoing um, all of my videos and book uh, updating everything Uh, that'll be several months that'll take that to do and I'm looking very forward to living and working in the same city. And uh, for the last 27 years, I've actually been gone more than I've been home. So right. 2017 will be a banner year for me where I'll actually have my feet on the ground a lot more. Yeah. Well, that'll be quite a change from somebody who's been peripatetic to one who is located, oh, staying yes. in the same locale, which will be very good. Yes. But we have been uh, uh, blessed to have Dr. Mark Shred as our guest today. Congratulations again on your award, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you very much. It was given to you last week by the Board of Directors of the uh, Parker Alumni Association. Mm-hmm. Really a signature, singular honor. We're delighted that you were able to receive that kind of recognition. Well, this has been To Your Health, and uh, our guest has been Dr. Mark Charette. Dr. Charette, thank you so much for being with us, and we hope that our, our uh, viewers and listeners will tune in to another edition of To Your Health. Thank you very much. We'll see you then.